In an earlier video, we analysed two photographs from LRO. One showing the alleged Apollo 15 site from 50 kilometers, and one showing the alleged Apollo 17 site from 25 kilometers. We showed that with the Apollo 15 site, the rover tracks gradually faded before disappearing altogether. And with the Apollo 17 site, the tracks just abruptly end outside the border of the published area of the image, as though someone started drawing these tracks on it and then gave up when they found they had too much work. I seriously wonder if NASA and the LRO team saw my video, because some months after I released my video, they released a new 26 meter per pixel image of the alleged Apollo 15 site. The caption contained this little blurb attempting to account for the fading tire tracks in the Apollo 15 image. The LRV wheels were 82 cm in diameter, and 23 cm wide. Typically, the LROC NAC pixels are about 50 cm square, so it is not always easy to pick out the LRV tracks. In previous LROC images, the LRV tracks are usually only visible near the LEM, where the descent engine exhaust plume disturbed the surface. The LRV wheels broke through the changed surface, and thus the tracks have more contrast near the LEM. There are many problems with this explanation. Firstly, the mysterious engine plume disturbance was nothing more than the sunlit sides of large craters close to where the LEM was said to have landed. There is no disturbed soil. Secondly, all the sources I've read state the disturbance, or halo as it's commonly called, to be little more than up to a couple hundred meters wide. Right around the lander, the surface is very dark, and I'm not talking about where there's shadows, but around the shadows. And then on a big halo that's maybe about oh, 100 to 200 yards wide, it's very much brighter. And then the tracks are superimposed on top of the bright halo. And we believe the bright halo was caused by the engine plume that was able to scour the very finest particles. Unfortunately for NASA, the claim that the LRV tracks are usually only visible on the halo fails here, because the Apollo 15 rover tracks fan out far greater than a couple hundred yards before fading. And then we have the Apollo 14 LRO images, which allegedly show astronaut boot trails leading all the way up to Cone Crater, which is one kilometre away from the site, five times the distance that the halo is said to have spread. Thirdly, even if the exhaust soil disturbance could account for the Apollo 15 tracks gradually fading outside the landing area, it wouldn't explain why the Apollo 17 tracks end abruptly and completely once a short distance beyond the edges of ASU's promotional imagery. Fourthly, we now have 25 meter per pixel images. At this, quote, greatly increased resolution, you'd expect to see the tracks continue even further. And yet, as with the Apollo 17 tracks, they just abruptly end. Which brings us to the latest 26km Apollo 15 image. Because of the different sun angle, the mysterious halo is virtually non-existent in this image. In fact, had you not seen pictures of this location taken under different lighting conditions, you'd probably never know that there was a large crater here. Despite all the double talk about the tracks generally being only visible on the halo and the need for higher resolution photographs, again in this Apollo 15 image, the tracks we saw before are incredibly faint and gradually fade before disappearing altogether. Usually when posting a new LROC image, ASU supplies the full-size TIFF file and some smaller cropped and annotated image in the full caption. Interestingly, in the full caption of this new picture, they bring to our attention not the fading tracks we saw before, but rather the tracks leading to the left of the screen. This portion of landscape was previously cropped out by the left edge of the 50 meter per pixel image. These tracks are more prominent, in fact partially visible when zoomed out, but they too are very faint and gradually start to vanish. In the full TIFF image, you can notice how the edge of the frame ends just after the tracks begin to disappear completely. Hmm, what are the odds? NASA has also released 25 meter per pixel images of Apollos 11 and 16. The press hyped about how in all but the Apollo 11, you can see the American flag still standing. In actuality, it should be, you can't see the American flag standing in any of the pictures, because once again, you need to squint really hard at these white smudgy pixels to try and make heads or tails out of anything. 
Furthermore, looking at these new pictures, it feels like they're not even trying to fool us anymore. This time, we are actually supplied with the Zoomify raw TIFF images. Outside the tiny area surrounding the pixelated artifacts, Apollo 16 shows almost no rover tracks whatsoever for miles. Just to put that into perspective, here's a full-sized reverse map of where the Apollo 16 rover is said to have gone. Note the extent of the tracks heading north and south, and off to the west. Now here's the section of the Zoomify raw image that shows the tracks and blueprints. This highly visible set of rover tracks fits right into this tiny area just here. Outside the landing area, there are a few places where the tracks can be found, although their appearance is quite different. To the north, I found a few very faint and dark tracks. They just seem to appear and disappear again, and the gaps between them are generally quite large. Take this area below Palmetto Crater for example. If we zoom in on that, we find a short track segment, except it has no continuation at either end. Let's follow up close, starting from the landing area. The tracks fade quite quickly initially. Here we have two very faint isolated sections of track here and here. And further up there's a little squiggle here. But beyond that, nothing here, or here, still nothing, and then here's that short track segment located far away. Returning to the landing area, if we move to the west, we eventually come across some white rover tracks. Yes, I said white. Somehow, they've changed colour from black to white. That's certainly interesting, because the tracks have always shown as black everywhere else. If the darkness of the tracks was caused by the shadow, then it should be dark in all places. Perhaps then, the darkness is caused not by the shadow, but by digging up different subsurface material. At least that could explain why the tracks are invisible or white elsewhere, but in which case, it would seem quite the coincidence that they always managed to land in areas that were dark underneath, even when the immediate surrounds weren't. Meanwhile, to the south of the landing area, there are absolutely no tracks to be found, white, black or otherwise. And that's in spite of the fact that there's supposed to be two sets of tracks heading down. Also note that there is a lot of activity going on at the bottom, and in an area that the supplied LRO image fully covers. Yet there's no tracks for that either. A 24 meter per pixel image of the Apollo 12 site was also released. Would you believe it? The Surveyor 3 is actually lit up this time. This time, the sun is shining in the opposite direction as the previous image taken at 25 meters per pixel. Here it appears that they have merged the white blobs, although there are a couple of smaller grey blobs on the bottom and right sides of the artifacts. Are these the boxes? If so, it's hard to tell what direction they are pointing in. In all honesty, I'm not even trying to make heads or tails out of this. I'm just too astounded by how inconsistent the lighting is between photographs. We have two pictures with the sun pointing east, in one the surveyor is brilliantly lit, and in the other it is pitch black. We have one image with the sun directly overhead and the surveyor in darkness, despite the alleged lem being lit up. And now, we have an image with the sun pointing west, with both crafts illuminated. And if you think that sounds ridiculous, you should see this. ASU released a short video comprising of pictures of the Apollo 12 site taken at various time intervals to show how the shadow lengths change over a lunar day. As we play this video, keep your eye on the surveyor and see what happens. When I first saw this, I nearly fell off the seat with laughter. I thought it was hilarious seeing the surveyor just randomly flash from black to white and vice versa. Like, wow, it looks terrible. Seriously, it looks like a lighthouse flashing on and off in the distance. And they call this evidence for Apollo?